What is surveying? How do surveyors use geometry? Surveying is a measurement of angles and distances, elevation and direction. It's especially useful for locating property boundaries, construction layout, and map making. Okay, Terry, can you tell me how surveyors use this equipment and geometry to survey land? Yes, let's look at this transit. It contains a telescope, a compass, and a protractor, and it's used to measure horizontal and vertical angles. You can measure angles in the field with this and measure those same angles back at your desk with a protractor. This instrument is used to lay out objects like football fields, baseball fields, soccer fields. Uh, today, let's demonstrate how we use this by laying out this football field. All right. First, we pick a starting point and set the transit over the point. We call this point corner number one. Then we measure 300 feet to the next corner and call it corner number four. We mark this corner with a corner marker. With zero on the scale, we look through the telescope and line up corner number four. We know that the angle between the sides of a rectangle is 90 degrees, so we turn the telescope towards corner number two until we can read 90 degrees on the transit circle or scale. Now we measure the width of the football field, 150 feet, and mark corner number two. Next, we move the transit over corner number two. With zero on the scale, we look through the telescope at corner number one marker. We turn the telescope towards corner number three until we can read 90 degrees on the scale. We measure 300 feet and mark corner number three. We now have all of the corners marked. Applying one of the basic rules of geometry, we know that the sum of the interior angles of a four-sided polygon is 360 degrees. So, our last angle must measure 90 degrees for a correct layout. The rule for checking the angles of any object is that the sum of the interior angles of a closed polygon is equal to the number of sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. You know, Jennifer, the art and science of surveying have been used for over 3,400 years to map and measure our world. Today, scientists at NASA are preparing to measure and map the planets of our solar system. Hmm, who knows? Maybe one day one of you will help survey Mars. Did you know that George Washington was a surveyor before he became president? Did you know Lewis and Clark used transits on the exploration mission? To understand angles and circumference, let's look at something we can all relate to. Pizza. Take the slice of pizza. Can you tell just by looking at it how many slices were in the original pizza and how big around it was? Sure you can. All it takes is a little geometry. A pizza usually has eight identical slices, but not always. Oh. So let's measure the angle width of this slice. That's the part you put in your mouth first. Excuse me, sir. What is this protractor read? Uh, the protractor reads an angle width of 45 degrees. Right. So what is the measurement of all the other angles touching the center? They have to be equal or the same measurement, 45 degrees. Right. Now, most pizzas are circular and circles measure 360 degrees. If you divide 360 degrees by 45 degrees, the original pizza had eight slices. Now, let's figure the circumference of this pizza. Most pizzas are measured in inches, so using the pizza with eight slices, if the length of the crust arc is five and a half inches, how round is your pizza? If there are eight slices, and the crust arc measures 5.5 .5 inches long, then 8 times 5.5 .5 inches equals 44 inches. The pizza has a circumference of 44 inches. Great! Try this one. What if the angle width of your pizza slice measures 30 degrees and the crust arc is 2.5 inches? How many slices would there be in the original pizza and what is the circumference? I've got it. 360 degrees divided by 30 degrees equals 12 slices. 12 slices times 2.5 inches equals a circumference of 30 inches. So, sir, would you rather eat a 12-slice pizza or an 8-slice pizza? Hmm. I'll choose the 8-slices. I couldn't possibly eat 12. 